Just because this, the, the father and the son have distinctive roles, it does not mean they're limited. If for whatever reason it was deemed as such that the father should be able to incarnate for the sake of humanity, then it would happen. But ultimately, from what we can see in scripture, the father does not incarnate, only the son does. Okay, so he, he is, Jesus has the qualities of God. Yes. And one of the qualities of God is that he's all powerful. Yes. So how is it that Jesus could be killed? God can't be killed. Okay. Except, except if he takes on a human, uh, a, a human uh, characteristic or a human nature. But then, but then he doesn't have a godly nature. He has he, a human oh no, nature. he does. Actually, he, he's a god with a human. So nature. we believe that he has both natures. Actually. So in the person of Christ, this is something called the hypostatic union in the Greek. In the person of Christ, in the single person of Christ, you have both the divine essence, what makes him God, as well as the human essence, what makes him a human being. But my point is, humans and God have very contradictory natures. No, humans can be jealous, they are, they are limited in their knowledge, okay. they have bad qualities, they have things to be created, they are okay. all powerful, they are not all knowing. Not knowing. God has the complete antithesis of those qualities. That's fine. But we believe that because of the divine essence being present in Christ at the same time as, as the human human essence, then the divine essence perfected the human essence. So Christ was a perfect man as a result. He never committed a sin and he never went against God. And he is God. And exactly, exactly. No, so, no, 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 wait a second, wait a second. He never went against God as in, he never broke any of the commandments that he had given Moses to give to the people. So as a man, he was perfect only because the divine essence was working on him to make him perfect. So even if Christ went to do a sin, he couldn't do so because of the presence of the divine essence. So in the person of Christ, you have two natures. So they don't contradict. Simply the divine exists and so does the human nature as well. <laughs> and how, sorry, how can he die? Absolutely. He can die only in the flesh. In the same way that you believe that when you die, something lives on after you. You don't completely erase from existence. You carry on living in a form that isn't your, your body. A soul, but it's not the of God. Huh? No, but in the same way, when Christ dies on the cross, God doesn't die. He simply just dies in the flesh. So the flesh is separated uh, temporarily from his essence. And then he resurrects himself two days later. So how can God die? If he takes on human flesh and then dies in the flesh. That's all. When he's alive, who is a God? He's always God. There's never a time when he wasn't God. Okay, okay. How God, for who he's praying to? The Father. The English, the Father. No, no. So God, he prayed to God. Wait, wait, wait. wait. No, no, excuse me. I'll come to you. No, no, it's common I'll come to you. Sorry, sorry, brother. Wait a second, I'll come to you. You said when he's alive, he's a God. So God, he's praying to God. I so told you, God I'll come here. to you, wait a second, because you're going to have me repeat my stuff, I don't want to do that, so wait a second, okay? Wait there patiently, I'll come to you, don't worry. Anything else? I, I see your point, your point is that he's made a human flesh form of himself. He's taken all the human flesh, yeah, for, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. No, I just, I can't grasp my head around the fact that he's a human, but he has godly attributes. Because he's, he's never but he being God. he doesn't have the godly attributes. He does. He does, because he can't declare the hour. God no, the hour. only the Father can declare the hour. How come God is beaten he by a human father. being? How he's come God, God, God from is beaten the by a human being? As he's the son, huh? But then he's not the Father, so yes, then I, not the same I, thing. No, I said that to you already. Yeah. That Christ is not the Father, but He is distinct from the Father. I said that already. The Father is one person. Be distinct, huh? but the same thing. No, they, they are distinct, and then they fully share in the divine essence of God, which is what makes them God. Brother, he never, never say I'm God. He never say I'm the God. I will God. come to you. No, no, wait a second. It's common sense, brother. It's Stop hyper. right there. I'll I just come to want you. To understand? Okay, I want to then learn. wait, brother, brother. and I'll come to you. Brother, it's common sense. Did he ever in the Bible say I am the boss? I I am the creator, I am God. Wait. He never say that. It's, it's common sense, brother. If he's a God, he never know the end of the hour. It's common sense, brother. I'm from the land of God. I'm from Palestine. Palestine.
sign is called the land yes, of God. Calm down. Yeah, from land the of whole Jesus. earth is the land of Jesus, God. Calm he down. Look like me. No, he didn't. But did Jesus he never claim like to be God? God? Absolutely, yes. So, so, so mo in multiple ways and fashions. For example, in Matthew 12, he calls. Oh, you're Jesus. Okay, bye. In Matthew 12, for example, he calls himself the Lord of the Sabbath. Why is that relevant? The Sabbath is a command that was given to Moses by who? By God. So how can a mere man, prophet, whatever you think he is, claim to be the Lord, the Lord over a law that God gave man? That is effectively sure called blasphemy or a lie. Yeah, but in the same so way you're saying no can have different interpretations, then Lord can have different interpretations. It means the messenger of the Sabbath. When does Lord ever mean messenger? For, no, ever for, mean for example, I, I, Allah calls himself uh, uh, the Rob, the Lord. Does that mean Allah's messenger or does that mean he is sovereign over something? Okay, yeah. thank you. That's all it means. Because, like, I mean, look in the Quran, look in the Bible. Find me a context where well, Lord implies uh, like a, a messenger. Lord implies someone who's sovereign. But in the same way, you said that no implies something else depending on the context. Yes. Can you find me an example? I gave you one. Can you find me one? In the Bible. In the Bible, in the Quran, where, where Lord means messenger. Okay, but, well, well that, that's what I would say. I haven't come across it. So I would say that the word Lord means sovereign, and the word no, among many other words in the Bible, for example, fear is another one. Like, like Again, fear is a negative thing, right? It means that you're terrified or you have terror. The Bible talks about fear in that, in that sense. God has not given you a spirit of fear, a spirit of trembling. God hasn't given you that. So if you have it, it's likely an attack from the enemy, the devil. But at the same time, it also says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So is that fear of the Lord the same fear that he talked about and he hasn't given you? No. It's two different kinds of fear. In the second sense, it's reverence. And in the first sense, it's terror. That's why I say. Anything else? <laughs> I just can't wrap my head around this, the fact that God can be killed. Yes, in the flesh. That's all. In the flesh. So God never stops existing. God is eternal. You can't kill God even if you try. But, no, 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 not a part of him. When he takes on flesh, you can harm the flesh because the flesh is is perishable. But then what, what has happened now is that when Christ it's not it's sort a of part of God because God doesn't have, doesn't have parts. It is simply a a, a um, you said it's three distinct elements. No, no, I, three distinct persons. They aren't parts because they wholly share what it means to be God. So a part is less than a whole. So the Father isn't less than the Son, the Son isn't less than the Father, the Father isn't less than the Spirit. They are all co-equal and co-eternal. Jesus is less than the Father because Jesus can be killed. No, no, no. So what, what you're seeing there is, is a man, matter of economy, right? Because Christ came as a human being and was a full human being and not a specter or a ghost or a superhuman, everything that can happen to a human being can also happen to Christ, including death. And, the, and, and he didn't come here, by the way, uh, to die for no reason. We believe that the reason happened was because man sinned in the Garden of Eden. And we believe that by sin came death. Because prior to this, God's original intention for man was not to die. And this is something that we believe that in the end of days, when the, new, when the old earth and heaven are done away with, a kingdom where nobody dies and we live forever will be ushered in that will reflect God's initial plan for humanity. So because by the, 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 by, by the, uh, by the hand of Adam, sin and death enter the world, for it to be taken away, it also had to be done by a man, a perfect man, a man who is called the second Adam in the Bible, Christ. And he is the one who came and took the, the, what we call the uh, keys of life and death from the devil, meaning that if you believe in him, then by believing in him, letting him into our lives, and letting him change the way we operate, we can then become sons of God and then attain salvation. I still believe that it was true. I just wasn't living it. So, me changing the first wave, me saying, okay, I'm actually going to do this. The actual point of the team 
What do you think about it? We've well, been there already. Jesus also said in the Bible that you should pray in his name and he would give you anything you're looking for. Jesus said in the Bible that he's Lord of the Sabbath. Jesus said in the Bible that he has authority to forgive sins on earth. Jesus said in the Bible that when two or three are gathered in his name, he is there in their midst. So he is talking as God and he is doing as God. So if they believe that, he's a, that Jesus Christ is a Muslim, then Jesus Christ is doing shirk, 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 and more shirk. I don't believe he's doing that, so that must mean that what he is saying is true, as he is perfect, therefore he is God. There you go, my friends. What you believe in in the Quran, unfortunately, is a lie. Easter is not Jesus Christ. He's, he's like a perversion of Christ, and that's, that's all. So unless you think that Easter or Christ is a liar, then the words he said in the Bible mean something. And to convict you. Ah, okay. Now, first of all, do we agree that in the Bible it says those things? Do we agree that in the Bible it says those things, I can show them to you, where Christ says that you can pray in his name and whatever you pray he will give to you, right? Because now what we're doing is that we're cherry picking. We're choosing to submit to the parts where Christ said the only true God is the Father or he prayed with his head on the floor. But then we're not actually submitting to when he said and spoke with authority that you can pray to him. Why are we cherry picking? When it comes to the Holy Trinity, when it comes to your faith, yes. well, actually, is it even in the faith that you need to have to sort of believe in it, or is it purely logical? You, 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 you require faith, but absolutely, God gave us logic, so we can absolutely apply it. Like, for example, uh, like the explanation behind the things of the Bible, you will not find directly inside the Bible. We, we, we can then apply our understanding of previous and past scripture to a verse. It's understanding of subjective, though. Huh? It's understanding and interpretation on, on the, of subjective. Understanding can certainly be subjective. But what we know is that we believe that the Spirit of God, that we can invite Him into our lives and then he can guide us on the correct path and luckily for us we have an early church from 2000 plus years ago and they are the ones uh, who, who ensure that everything that it is that we have as doctrine today was accurate according to the apostles who were directly with Christ so before we talk about the Bible being corrupted do we accept that the things in the Bible are there is Jesus Christ saying these things about himself for example, when he says something like, uh, whatever you ask me in my name, this I will do, that my Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me for anything in my name, I will do. Can anybody apart from God say this? Can, can Muhammad say it, for example? No. So, unless we're going to start cherry picking and saying, well, I don't believe in that verse because it sounds a little bit too, uh, too uh, the, like descriptive. If it's too divine for me, I'm going to go to the other verse that sounds not human. You can do that, but you're missing Christ. Yes, Christ was in the form of a human being, but also he is God. Anything else, my friend? Or are, are, are we... I, I, I want to ask you guys one question. To you, who is Christ? Who is he to you? And where, whatever he is to you, where are you getting the information from? Any one of you? Any one of you? Yeah. Okay. Okay. But he was not the final prophet. And he says that there will be a prophet coming after me. Okay. Okay. And do you know anything about Isa? Like, can you like tell me something about him? Like, tell me things, like lessons, like, like where he was, where he went, uh, who his disciples were, anything. I mean, I believe I can't tell you things without okay. quoting the Quran directly. I mean, I mean, go ahead if you want to. You can. But I mean, there are more similarities between Islam and Christianity than you would think. There are not, in my personal opinion. There are. It's just that we don't believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Okay. 
right? But you know in the but you know in the Quran it tells you in, in Surah 43 verse 61 that if Allah had a son, that Muhammad would have to, have to worship him, right? You know it says that in the Quran. So yeah, so, so it implies that if God does have a son, then that son has qualities worthy of worshiping. And I am telling you that Christ is the Son of God. So therefore, according by the logic in the Quran, because Christ himself says so. How do you know that? So, the earliest manuscripts. That's one way of knowing it. The earliest recorded documentation that we have of Christ has him claiming to be the Son of God. And has others also verifying this as well. People who also didn't believe in him and who did they believe in him. So again, why are you cherry picking who Christ is? I'm just saying, sorry, yeah, like, no worries. Uh, I'm just saying, do you believe that the, the Bible has been altered over time? Okay, altered to. That's my issue. The okay, is the word of okay. Again, before we move there, before we move there, can we admit that Christ does say these things that are divine in the Bible that we have today? This is my point. My point is, how can you trust the Bible if it's been altered over time? Okay, but your again, does the Bible that we have today say these things? about Christ. Let's start off with step one and then we go to the next one. Okay, well, today, today is a lucky day. But I spoke to the guys over there, the, the Christians over there, and they told me this. They said, they said, I showed them a contradiction in the Old Testament. And they said, we don't follow the commandments of the Old Testament, which is a ceremonial book. Are you talking about the 10 or the 613? So those are commands for the Jews. Let me explain very quickly. So God gave them 10 commandments to follow. But unfortunately, as humans do, they kept messing up. So you would have priests and Moses add additional commands to the 10 in order to negate things that they were doing at the time. Right? So as a Gentile or a non-Jew, the, the, these laws are there specifically to help the Jews follow the Ten Commandments. We don't need to abide to those laws, the ceremonial laws, because Christ has already come here and by believing in Christ and following Him, we will attain the perfection that the Ten Commandments and the Sister and Thirteen Commandments were trying to drive the children of Israel to. Okay? So, this contradiction that you saw, what was it in the Old Testament? Uh, there were some verses about eating pork and drinking alcohol kind of things. Okay. But my, it was more of a, I asked him why are there contradictions there? Why don't you believe in them? And he says that we only believe in the Ten Commandments, not the 613. Be because the 613 were for the Jews, they were additions to the Ten done by Moses to negate issues that they were having at the time with following the Ten. So you don't believe in the Old Testament? How does that, that's Let, right. Is that what I said? Because I'm saying there are things clearly said in the Old Testament which you guys don't believe. So no, we accept, we accept that these things are there, but as non-Jewish Gentiles, are they necessary for our salvation? The answer is no. So I don't negate that these things are in the Bible. Yes, they are there. Yes, for a time they were there to guide children of Israel. The only time it was applicable was when Christ came and called out a universal call to all people, the Jews and the Gentiles, and then the early church had to figure out how does a Gentile come into the Jewish church. And that's when they were like, okay, well, let's get one thing straight. Christ is essential for salvation, not adherence to the old law. As an example, in the Quran, earlier on, alcohol is called a sign from Allah. Then later on, you're told you can't drink it. So because you don't because you don't drink alcohol, does that mean you don't believe in the part of the Quran that says that the intoxicants from the vine are a sign from Allah? No. Huh? But they're a sign from Allah. No, 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 no. bad thing. So, so wait, are signs from Allah negative things? Not necessarily, but that's taking it out of context. Yeah, well, tell me. Just because it says it's a sign from Allah, and I'll check Do you know anything? Doesn't mean it's saying you should drink it. Do you know anything that's a sign from Allah? Huh? Do you agree with me? Just because it says it's a sign doesn't mean you should drink it. But it doesn't say you shouldn't drink it either, right? So, so later on, exactly. So the fact that you don't believe. I'm saying, show me a point where at the start it says you should drink alcohol, or you can, and later on it says you does not But that's an explicit verse fallacy. He doesn't need to do that. I don't. He's he's no, no, he, he's no, saying that okay. there's a verse that seems to be implying from the base reading that's of the text that this seems to be a thing you can do. I've seen Muslims affirm this, by the way. Because I'm saying at the early point it was permissible. Even in the hadith, 
like, like uh, b beforehand, alcohol drinking was allowed until one day some men were drunk and stumbled into a mosque. And then, and then the Rasulullah said that you couldn't drink anymore when you come into a mosque. That's all. So again, so, so my point is, paralleling the verse about the vine and the intoxicants being a sign from Allah with the 613 commands. Because later on, we have an addition that doesn't require us to follow the 613, the same way as you, with alcohol being banned later on. Because we realize that there's a change now in how we apply these laws, does that mean, does that mean that you no longer believe in the Quran? No, it doesn't. I don't see that as being a change. So why would it be called a sign from Allah? What does that mean? What does that mean then? Only see the verse in context. But there's no contradiction. I didn't say that. I'm asking you. You're saying a change. A change implies there's a contradiction or there's a change from something that was said before to after. Do you know anything that is a sign from Allah that, 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 that's a haram, for example? I need to see the verse in okay. context, to be honest. But I'm saying that doesn't mean that it's saying you should drink it. If you show me a verse which says you can drink, and verse 8 says you can't drink, fine, I'm with you. I don't believe you had that in the Quran, but that wasn't the point I was trying to raise. Well, if, if you want a contradiction, I can give you one. But I was simply telling you that at one point, something was seen as beneficial, as a sign from Allah. And then later on, it was discounted completely. No, 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 that's not true. From my limited knowledge, okay. what I know is, um, it says in the Quran there are benefits to alcohol. But, right. okay. but overall, the negatives outweigh the benefits, and that's why it's not allowed to, to be I haven't seen that verse before, but maybe it's there. <laughs> overall. Okay, so but can... It doesn't mean it, it's saying at one point you can drink it, at another point you can't. Well, that, that, that's what your, your, your later Hadith tradition does rectify that, unfortunately. It does say that for a time, Muslims were drinking. Yeah. And then later, it was later abrogated and they couldn't okay. drink anymore. Okay. Okay. But well, why do I care about the actions of others? I care about the Quran. Perfect. Which is why when you look at the 613, they don't apply it to us Gentiles because we're not Jewish. There you go. What we need instead is belief in Christ. He called himself the way, the truth, and the life. By the way, something no mere man can say. Muhammad can say it. Buddha can say it. Uh, who, else, who else is there? Um, Krishna can say it, for example. Only, only God can. Because that would mean, if you, say, for example, if you had Muhammad saying this, that would mean that Muhammad would then be taking one of the names of Allah for himself. Al-Haq, the truth, which he can't do. Okay, but I, I see remember the point about alcohol wasn't really that conclusive. In my opinion. If you show me clear as day, fine. For example, I showed the gentleman over there the verse in the Old Testament saying, they shall not eat of the carcass of the twine. Who's they? Me or the uh, Jews? A guy called Richard. No, but who's they? He's Me or the Jews? Not you. He's a Christian. No, no, no. I can show you the you said verse. they shall not eat. Who is the they? Is it me or the Jews? It, it, I can show you the verse. It was, it's the Jews. So I'm so not a Jew. You don't care about those 613. I care about Christ. And because I have Christ, again, I care about Christ because I have Christ. I don't need to abide by 613. I abide by Christ. Okay. Alright? Alright. Thank you. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate it. God bless you guys. Uh, all so many people I spoke with some, uh, well, with, with uh, one person who wasn't a, a Christian or a Muslim, and one person who was a Christian, and I said, sorry, I'm sorry, a Muslim, my, my, my apologies. So we talked about who Christ is, uh, what they believe about Christ, I shared the gospel with them, I told them that without Christ you have no hope of salvation, and then we clarified some things about their understandings of the Old Testament and the New, and particularly the person of God. Who God is, how God functions, how we understand the, the, the three in one. And ultimately, um, this is the first time he heard it, so again, the concept might be new. He said himself that he's not a scholar, he's not learned, or whatever the case might be. But hopefully he comes back and asks more questions, or goes and done his own, his own research. He did try a few times to appeal to the Taoist scripts, talking about the Bible being, uh, having contradictions in it, uh, not being preserved. But I tried to stick to the point here, because the two of them didn't seem like they were here to agitate. So I wanted to get across the gospel to them as much as I could. Hopefully, I've planted the seed, and then we'll see if, if God, God uh, continues to prune it and, uh, and, and make it, make it uh, water and grow. But anyway, we'll pray for them. See you guys later.